Hi all, I have another fascinating game to show you in a chess nutshell. This is Howard Staunton against Bernard Horwitz. Howard Staunton is responsible for our Staunton piece design, which we still use today. It's amazing, he had some revolutionary ideas, not just for board aesthetics, but actually his gameplay itself. He was a bit of a chicken, he avoided a match with Paul Morphy. There were lots of reasons given for not having a match. Paul Morphy really wanted to play Howard Staunton. Anyway, this game in 1851, C4. He plays the English opening, very popular nowadays. Uh, E6, Knight C3. Black plays, Bernard Horwitz plays a, a Dutch defence. So it's English opening versus Dutch defence. G3, again, very modern. Finchetto. So a far cry from the King's Gambits of the time. D3, Knight A6. And you'll notice here, A3. Okay. And now, E3, not deploying the Knight here, is very modern. It's it means that f4 might be useful later it's not hemming in the bishop at all it's trying to keep control of the d5 square black castles knight g e2 knight c7 white castles d5 now here it's uh interesting that um black has this construction which really i guess is geared towards this bishop not being a uh, not been too good you know facing granite here uh now staunton plays b3 i'm not sure this is the most accurate move it's an it's nice to have a double fin chateau but uh it might be more prudent to try and stop black playing e5 in this position because actually if you think about it this knight is also helping d5 anyway it's not as if d5 is crumbling so we quick look technically um well Maybe, maybe not here. It's it's not so easy to do something about e5, and it doesn't matter. But what is played is b3, which it kind of means e5 is is more effective in this particular position, actually, uh, because if a bishop comes here, uh, it will be potentially blunted. Uh, so e5 here looks as though it's playable. But uh, it wasn't wasn't played actually. Black just plays queen e8. Now we have bishop b2, and again e5 seems playable here. It wasn't played queen f7, <laughs> and it's actually here. Knight b1 might actually be a good move to stop e5 now. Now that this double finchetto uh, has been constructed, but we see rook c1. So both sides don't be bothered. Are not bothered about the apparent positional threat of e5 they show uh, a kind of obliviousness to this possibility and it's here after you know bishop d7 black could have played d takes um funny enough e5 here and this is this is fine for black it also it kind of helps liberate this bishop and maybe sometimes even f4 might be useful um but uh, yeah, both sides are completely oblivious, it seems, <laughs> to this. And again, here, knight b1 uh, is an interesting move, an interesting retreat just to control e5. Uh, as an example, if we can control e5, we can actually plonk a knight into e5. That's protecting the a point. As an example, with a control of e5, this is really pleasant for white technically a clear advantage to white but both sides are actually kind of oblivious to it instead e4 is played here and this is black's kind of last chance not to have a permanent positional damage should really play d takes and then e5 this position it's not too bad for black for example taking it's active there uh that's that's one example or queen c2 queen g6 it's it's okay it's okay for black uh but black really he didn't play uh that he played this which is a lot different now uh because there's huge pressure on d5 so e5 is impossible d5 will be dropping off um we have in fact now after rook 88 white gaining significant space advantage so by black not playing e5 He's suffering space disadvantage. This bind on the position on on dark squares. Yeah, white's freer 
uh, f4 this this pawn's constrained this bishop's constrained by the pawn on e6 we have now d takes which kind of makes things worse now both positionally and tactically all of this because this is now a loose piece subject to tempo gain g6 weakening dark squares which helps this bishop potentially because if ever a knight comes to d6 it's going to wrench open this diagonal emphasizing underlining these weaknesses uh, we have queen b3 highlighting this as a loose piece and putting pressure on c8 now knight e4 with tempo of course bishop goes there rook bd1 now queen c3 and immediately things like c5 and knight d6 look massive for white uh, in this position takes knight c5 with the possibility of knight a4 introduced for the moment knight d6 hitting the queen and now this is addressed with queen c2 we have knight g7 as though knight f5 is on the cards that's stopped it also means this third rank is pretty clear uh, for any attacking maneuvers queen e7 we have bishop d4 which might employ a4 a5 trying to undermine c5 queen c7 a4 so yeah if the queen moves there's a there's a little tactic a5 if the queen moved it's at the moment a5 is um it's still a threat pardon me it's still a threat because if it takes then takes here so this is the threat a5 in this position uh i i believe a5 is a major threat in this position and it's parried with knight a6 uh so c5 gaining even more of space and it's a really luxurious position with this monster knight on d6 this monster pawn chain space advantage queen b3 uh, we have now b6 now knight e4 going into that f6 yeah the dark squares which were compromised earlier knight f6 check now tactically king h8 is played but tactically you might think rook takes f6 is worth a punt actually after takes not f g7 but here knight takes d4 guarantees white an advantage not just because of e6 but c6 in particular because e6 has a bit of poison to it that black has queen f7 so for example here the best pawn to take would not be this one because of queen f7 with a pin but actually this one and white's got a massive uh position no actually even easier even easier g5 clear advantage to white big target there for example this move knight takes c6 it's difficult for black to do anything in this position uh if bishop d7 i think we just snap we just snap on uh e6 yeah because there's no queen f7 there uh so th this is this is horrible both both targets here the bishop b7 we just take on e6 for example it's falling to bits it's falling to bits here so basically yeah that tactical moment yeah this rook f6 is not working too well technically but now the majestic sweep across the third rank threatening mate 98 defending laterally bishop a1 it's beautiful that the bishop's pointing like this against the king knight takes e takes now black has to set up a blockade on this diagonal bishop e5 queen b7 bishop e4 uh threatening sometimes very very nasty things now involving the f pawn it's blocked for a moment but now a wonderful little move can you see what white plays if i give you five seconds to pause the video a nice positional move so black set up this blockade how can we lift the blockade of the queen on f7 Nimzovich has sometimes said the queen's one of the worst blockaders now why would the queen be a bad blockader here in concrete terms what can white do to try and lift this f pawn blockade if i give you five seconds okay knight g1 yeah with the possibility of knight f3 and then knight g5 or if the bishop moves knight e5 both lifting this blockade bishop d8 now we actually have g5 holding that pawn so actually it's this route which is favored now after bishop b7 knight f3 because that's been closed off of course g5 
by the pawn. Bishop d6 now introduces the big knight e5. Black desperately plays this. It's desperate stuff, this, this sack. Because really, what is he doing after knight e5? There's f7. That's the end of the game, isn't it? This is desperately lost, really. Knight g5 threatening mate. Bishop e5. And now bishop takes g6 and the game ended here. Crushing. A wonderfully modern game uh, by Hans Dalton. In in this possession here, this is mate, by the way. It's pretty desperate. Here, it's, well, it's, it's, Black has to give up the queen to fend off. It's crushing, crushing blow. Anyway, it's, it is, as, as I mentioned, sorry. It's a it's a wonderfully modern game. Double fianchetto. But there is an element of e5 being completely neglected or understood as a positional threat from both sides. And black really suffered by allowing white to play e5, gaining a huge space advantage. Grip on the dark squares. Black exacerbated that with later g6. But it was really nice how white kind of lifted the blockade later and made use of that space advantage. A really kind of modern game. It's like an out of era the ga era game by Howard Stone. He did seem to be some sort of visionary, you know, both for his ideas on on peace uh, sets. I also I think the tournament clock itself was was influenced by him as well. Uh, having a chess clock, was, he he really modernised the game basically, but he had modern ideas in his own game. Actual chess ideas were kind of modern here in this game. I think some of you might agree. It's modern esque style. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. Comments, questions, likes appreciated. Thanks very much.